All right, we're going to go ahead and resume our meeting, and uh, we'll have our third item. And this is commercial front end garbage collection. Mr. Mayor, members of the council, uh, the last item on your workshop this evening does have to do with commercial garbage collection, specifically what we refer to as commercial front end collection. A little bit of history. Originally, the city provided this service. That's when the city was relatively small. In the 80s, we got into a combination of city service, but it was provided through private vendors. We have sitting in the audience this evening representatives from two companies that have over the years provided this service under contract with the city, Waste Industries and Waste Management. Normally, the city does a bid process. Normally, the bid is a five-year contract with <coughs> options for extensions. And your current contract is with Waste Management. It's a contract that was uh, issued for five years and over the last two years, you have authorized one-year extensions. The current contract will expire on June 30th of this year. A little bit of data. The current contract with Waste Management calls for a rate of $5.62 per tip. That means that when the commercial garbage truck arrives at the scene and they're going to empty the commercial dumpster, that is a cost of $5.62. Now that is not a monthly fee. That is a per tip fee. So for example, if you're getting it twice per week, then you're going to pay that number times two. If you're getting five day a week service, then you're going to get this number times five. We currently have about 830 customers who have a variety of service. The maximum that you get in service is five days a week. The minimum is two. We only provide the service Monday through Friday. That's through our contract. If a person needs Saturday service, then they make arrangements through whichever vendor that they choose. There are certain factors to consider when you approach the issue of where are we going to go for the future. The first thing that everyone needs to understand is we have to take some action. Why is that? Your contract is ending. So tonight we are beginning a process to really give us direction as to where you want us to go relative to commercial front end collection for the next period of years. We believe as a staff that service delivery in whichever way you want to go, whether it's city crews or whether it's private vendor, the number one thing we have to stress is what is going to be the quality of service that we are going to provide. The reason why we think that is essential is because this is being provided through the city. We sent out a questionnaire to about 20% of our current customers and we asked them how they felt about the service. And the answer was they thought it was great. The reason why they thought it was great was because they think the city is doing it. Because guess what? We are. We're the ones who are there whenever a dumpster gets missed, whenever there's a complaint regarding a dumpster pad being damaged or a gate being damaged, and we work with the vendors. But the reason why, in my opinion, you have such good receptivity on the, pa on the part of the customer is the fact that Kerry and his staff are there. They don't see this as a waste management. They don't see it as a waste industry. They see, they meaning the customer, they see this as a city service. We believe in any choice you make, the number one consideration you should make is what is going to be the quality of service you can deliver, and that impacts the image of the city. If you're not going to be interested, and I know you are, but if service delivery is not the most important thing to you, then I would suggest to you that we should get out of the business completely and let the free market decide. Factors, another thing that we believe is plan B. What's plan B? Plan B is what are you going to do when, you're, when three of your four or three of your five trucks are broken down? How are you going to get service delivered? Because at the end of the day, you know, it really doesn't matter what the excuse is. It doesn't matter what the justified explanation is. Did the garbage get picked up or did it not? Now, without being critical, we've had difficulties in this area. And that is why several months ago you authorized us to proceed with the bid process 
and for the city to be a part of the process. And we're going to show you how we've done that this evening. The service that we're talking about is for commercial collection for garbage and recycling through the method of front-end collection. Okay, that's what it includes. What does it not include? Well, let me give you an example. Several of our, our large retail boxes have compaction units. They're not served by front-end loader. They're not served by a two, four, six, eight cubic yard dumpster. They're served by a very large dumpster that has a compaction unit on it. The service we're talking about will not interfere with a business that wants to have that type of service. It also does not include roll-off service. So if you have a roll-off container, whether it's opened or closed, whether it has a compaction unit or not, we're not talking about roll-off. Roll-offs are primarily rear operations. And it also does not require mandatory recycling. Why? When I'm talking about mandatory recycling, while the state law encourages everyone, and we do have a, a goal that every county has to reach for recycling, we're not talking about the city having the ability to mandate recycling comes through the city. I'll give you another example. Big boxes produce a huge amount of cardboard. They have contracts directly with individuals regarding recycling. On the other hand, a small store, such as maybe an auto parts store, doesn't produce nearly as much. They do their recycling through us. So the service we're talking about tonight is the collection on the front end of the truck of commercial garbage. It does not include compactor, roll-off, and it does not mandate recycling only through the city. There are two things we need to really spend time discussing, and I want to make sure that we understand that while we're looking for guidance tonight, we're not asking for a decision. We are definitely looking for guidance, though. There is the issue of exclusive versus non-exclusive service, private vendor versus city service. Let's talk about what exclusive and non-exclusive service is. Exclusive service is basically the service provided only by city authorization. And let me give you some examples. <clears throat> there are cities in the state of North Carolina who have established an exclusive <coughs> arrangement, and they do that either with city crews or with franchises. But what it says is that if you're inside my corporate limits, when I say my, I'm not talking about the city of Jacksonville, I'm talking about any city. If you're within those corporate limits, you must have your garbage collected through the city. Now the city can provide that either with city crews or with a franchise vendor. So you can set up an exclusive arrangement even if you would like to continue with a private company. But you would do that through a franchise. Exclusive service is for a <coughs> provider or for providers. And I'll give you an example there. There is a county not too far from here that set up exclusive service. But they issued two franchises, one for company A, one for company B. They each have a territory. Now in our case, I don't believe the city is large enough to have territories, but I just want you to be aware that you could, as this community grows, you could set up franchise territories or service territories. What is exclusive service? It basically means there's no competition because all of your garbage is collected through the city process whatever process that is. Exclusive service can be by city franchise, by city crews, or a combination. What is non-exclusive? Well, it basically means that you can use our service or you can't. For years, we have had a service that many people thought was exclusive. It was not. It's a non-exclusive service. And what that means is that our 830 customers come to us because they felt it was a benefit to them through bulk purchasing, through proper management, through customer service with Terry and his folks. At the same time though, while we have been doing that service, any pizza shop, any Walmart, <coughs> any restaurant, could set up their own arrangement with a private company if they so chose. Non-exclusive, others may also provide service, 
and in those cases the price is set by the vendor. What are the pros and cons? Well, everybody has some. I'll list the ones I thought of. Pros. Exclusive service means, number one, the city is going to control the quality of the service. Number two, the city provides the service through either a vendor or vendors or through city crews. The city controls the rates. How do we do that? Either through competitive bidding and rate increases that are asked by the vendor or by you establishing your own rates and determining what we're going to charge for it. <clears throat> One of the real important things about an exclusive service is a guaranteed customer base. What does that mean? We have 830 customers. Every vendor who bid is hoping that you're going to keep 830 customers. The city, when we put together our cost opinion, we are assuming 830 customers. If, on the other hand, you had non-exclusive and that customer base was fractured one-third, 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 it would have a financial impact whether you're a private vendor or whether you're the city. Excuse me. Yes, sir. Who maintains the inventory of this 830 city? Yes, sir. And if a new, new business, I start a new business in time, I'm solicited by the city to sign up for garbage collection? Kerry? Yes, sir, that's correct. <coughs> How's that when you... Somebody comes in to get a business privilege license, they're contacted. That, that and also through the planning process, sir, when we have a site plan okay. that comes through, we look at the site plans and, and uh, make the determinations about the enclosure and so forth, and then we solicit and the we business. we inform them that we're offering commercial garbage collection. Yes, sir. This way and under these terms. Yes, yes. sir. And one yes. thing, uh, Mr. Bidner, I meant to mention earlier, and I appreciate you bringing <coughs> this up, the current arrangement and the bid specs all set it up where the city is the is the party that sets up the accounts the city is the party that bills the city is the party that collects the city is the party that if i may use the term solves problems the vendor is the party that supplies the service That's and true. from a vendor standpoint i'm going to tell you uh, i can understand why people want to be the city's vendor because we guarantee 100% collection, we handle all the collection problems, we handle all of the complaint problems. I mean, it's a, it's a very good situation if you're in private business in the commercial waste, in my opinion. The cons of exclusive are no competition, all city customers must participate, and the rates are set by the city. Hopefully, the rates that we set, either through bidding or through <coughs> another approach, are competitive. Non-exclusive, the pros, it allows competition, it allows the customer to make a choice, the rates are set by the marketplace, the cons, the rates are set by the marketplace. It does not protect revenue and customer base can be split. 